Hey all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor. I hope you all are having an amazing week. Today, we're gonna to be taking another look at the Steam Deck, and this time, we're gonna be seeing how to transform this handheld PC into a fully-fledged gaming PC, complete with keyboard, mouse, monitor, and headset. And we're gonna do it all with this, which is an Anchor 555 USB hub, and I'll have a link to this in the description below. It's not an affiliate link. This video is not sponsored. It is completely funded by myself. And we're gonna connect all our peripherals to this Anchor device, effectively turning this into a gaming PC. We're gonna see what kind of benefits we get by doing that because we get some features that we don't normally get with the regular Steam Deck by connecting it as a gaming desktop PC. And then we'll see how it effectively performs in 1080p as a gaming desktop PC. So let's check that out and get started. Okay, let's get started with connecting the Steam Deck to all our peripherals. So we're gonna start with our hub here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into the USB ports. The Steam Deck features a 3.2 generation USB-C port. So this should have more than enough bandwidth to support all our devices that we're gonna connect. We're gonna start with our Steam Deck power. This hub delivers 85 watts of power, so it'll be more than enough to charge the Steam Deck as we game. Next, we will plug in our keyboard. So this keyboard is the K100, and it takes in two USB ports, one for the USB hub on the keyboard and one to power the keyboard itself. You can probably see that that's powered on right there. Okay, now, very important, our ethernet cable. Okay, next we have the, what, what is this? This is the headphones. So it is a USB. Um, I have a USB-C adapter on there because we're out of USB ports on this hub. So I'm gonna plug that in there. And now the SteelSeries wireless headset is connected. And then lastly, we are going to plug in the monitor. And this is a 1440p, 240 hertz monitor, but we're not gonna be able to game in 1440p. Unfortunately, the Steam Deck just isn't powerful enough to support that. So we're gonna do the next best thing and game in 1080p. Because we're using an HDMI on the hub, the maximum bandwidth that we're gonna get out of this is 120 hertz. So halving our refresh rate, but I mean 120 hertz, is still way higher than the 60 hertz that is on the Steam Deck. So that's one of the features we get by connecting to an external monitor here. So now let's get the Steam OS configured to support the desktop mode. All right, now that we have everything configured, we are going to set up the OS so it will immediately boot us into the Steam Deck OS interface, kind of the gaming interface. And this is very similar to what we have on the regular deck, but we do not want this. We want to go into the desktop mode to get the full benefit out of this. So we're gonna to go to the power and we're gonna to switch to desktop and then it's gonna take a bit. It's gonna to switch to the Linux interface, which is a Linux desktop environment. And then from there, that's where we're gonna launch our games and do all our configuration. So now that we're here, the first thing to do is to change your wallpaper to something that is really awesome. Steam has some amazing wallpapers for the Steam Deck. They're all really clever. Like, look at this clouds wallpaper. Let's check this out. Look at that. That looks amazing. The Steam Deck logo. Kidding aside, they're, they are really cool. So check them out, but it's not essential. Let's take a look at some more essential stuff, like opening up the settings here and making sure that we have our correct refresh rate and our correct resolution because Chances are, if you're setting this up for the first time, it's gonna take on like a wonky resolution and you're gonna wanna fix that. So immediately it's gonna connect to the laptop screen. The laptop screen it's referring to is the Steam Deck. We wanna make sure that it is enabled, is unchecked, and primary is unchecked because we wanna click on our external monitor and check enabled and primary on our external. We're gonna wanna set it to 1920 by 1080 and make sure the refresh rate is at 120 hertz. If you're doing this on your monitor, just make sure that it lines up with the settings on your monitor if you want to replicate this setup. Um, but now we should be good to go. The monitor on the Steam Deck is off. We're using the mo monitor fully on the Steam OS, which is gonna give us that kind of that native resolution on any game that we play. 
And now we're pretty much set up. We can go ahead and fire up some games and see how they perform. The first game that I'm going to fire up is Bioshock 2 Remastered. I love Bioshock. I love testing it on the deck because it works so well. So we're gonna fire it up and see how it performs in the desktop mode. And we're gonna see when it first fires up, we haven't connected our headset yet. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that on and you will see a little notification in the center of the screen. Now our headset is on, but you'll notice we haven't automatically connected to the audio. That's because the SteamOS is gonna to try to connect to the DEX internal audio, and that's not what we want. So what we're gonna to have to do, oh, and you're gonna get a little notification that your controller is disabled. That's perfectly okay. Just hit space and it will continue. We're gonna go and we're gonna hit the Windows key and we're gonna to go to sound and make sure that if you do have wireless headphones connected or any kind of uh, external input, that you select the input in the speaker so here I'm using the RX Pro, so I'm gonna choose the Artist Pro so that it connects to the auto there. And then just close it up, return to the game, and you're good to go there. So just a note about audio. Okay, here we are in Bioshock, and I hope you can see the game all right, and see me too, but more importantly, the game. First off, we're gonna go into our options, and I just kinda like to do this for each game, is just make sure that we are actually in 1080p, we have all our settings correct, so I have vertical sync on, um, windowed mode is off, all this necessary stuff, and you might have to adjust your mouse input because it might be a little weird after taking the settings from the Steam OS on the Steam Deck handheld and transferring it over to the desktop PC, so that's just something to be aware of. But now we can play it just like normal, and I am on mouse and keyboard, we're getting 80 frames per second, and this is in 1080p. I mean, this is this is pretty playable, and it and it looks pretty nice even with a 1440p screen here. It's it's very playable. The graphics look really good, and it is really smooth. Yeah, we're getting 90 frames per second. We can. I have no idea. You might have to kind of relearn the inputs because I have no idea how to switch my weapons right now. Oh, a scroll wheel. Okay, there we go. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty playable. I mean, here we're having combat, very smooth. I am out of ammo, it seems. And just getting completely wrecked by this big daddy. Amazing, amazing immersive gaming experience with Bioshock in desktop mode. All right, let's check out another game. Here we have another single player game and this is Resident Evil Biohazard. And it is running at 1080p. We are getting 80 frames per second. And this is kind of the starting area where you're in the house. So I'm not gonna spoil anything here playing this, but we're just having kind of a walkthrough through the house, and I mean, it looks good. The gameplay is actually really smooth, and you get to experience it on a bigger screen with a mouse and keyboard, all connected to the Steam Deck. This is all being powered by the tiny little Steam Deck. Amazing. Let's go ahead and explore another game. All right, now let's have a look at a competitive shooter game and what better game to demonstrate than Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So here, this is a game that is arguably not a great experience on the handheld because Counter-Strike on joysticks doesn't have very good auto aim, if any at all. So really the experience playing with keyboard and mouse is a must. Here we are playing with keyboard and mouse and uh, I am not the best Counter-Strike player anymore. Um, I mean, I never was, but uh, I was a lot better than this. But it's playable. I mean, we are playing at 1080p. It is around 40, 60 frames per second. We're hitting 80. I have no idea what this map is. I don't think I've ever played this map before. But I mean, we're hovering around 60 frames per second. This is doable. This You can actually like play a game with this and have some success. Yeah, this is actually like a very playable experience. 
and it, this is a perfectly viable solution for a competitive shooter in my opinion. Let's go ahead and look at another game. Our next game is going to be Halo Infinite and we are hooked up via keyboard and mouse. I am running at 1080p I think. Well actually let me double check. Okay now I'm running in 1080p. I was a little bit under but we are getting 35 frames per second and I'm able to track that guy pretty well with a keyboard and mouse. That is definitely doable. Let's see about this guy. Oh, 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 oh. Got him. Easy. Yeah, this is definitely doable. You know, now that I think about it, that might have been my teammate, but I don't know. I'm not very good at this game. I think that might have been my teammate. But I mean, this is playable. Between 30 and 40 frames per second is about what I'm getting. And this is totally doable. Keyboard and mouse hooked up to the Steam Deck. And it is running on Linux. That is the most incredible thing of all. Playing Halo on Linux. This is Halo multiplayer playing against real humans competing to see who is the best on Linux. That is insane. Guys, this really means a lot to me because I, I saved up all my money for my first gaming computer. I saved up $1,100 for my first gaming computer when I was like 13. And the whole reason I did it was to play Halo 1 Combat Evolved on the PC. And it had a Pentium 4 and an NVIDIA 7600 GS graphics card just to play Halo. And that was $1,100. And now I'm playing Halo Infinite on the Steam Deck, which cost $650. And I'm probably getting around the same frame rate, to be honest, 30 to 40 frames per second. I mean, you just can't beat that deal. That is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, this is playing Halo on keyboard and mouse on the Steam Deck in desktop mode. That is the way to do it. And you get insane benefits by doing it this way. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is just way too much fun. Here is another popular competitive title Dota 2, and here I am playing as Magnus, because one, I don't really play Dota, so I don't really know who to pick, and because Magnus is so adorable, he's like a giant rhinoceros mammoth thing, and I mean, that is just cute as hell, so of course I'm going to play him. Anyway, the experience is pretty good. Uh, this is 1080p, as always, and I am getting 40 frames per second right now. And this is playable. I don't think I would ever play a game like Dota 2 on the Steam Deck handheld because I don't even know how that would be physically possible. I'm sure there are people who do it with the touchpads or some other mechanism, but I, I cannot do that. So I have to connect it via keyboard and mouse in order to play remotely at all. And I mean, this is playable. I mean, I can last hit pretty reliably. I can attack the enemies, move around the map, see what's going on in mid. Oh, okay, Lena's doing some work there. Go down here. Okay, Crystal Maiden. She's attacking that. Oh, that person just got out and switched back to my character. And all within like 30 to 40 frames per second. We're dipping down into the 30s, but I mean, still, it's, it's playable. If you really wanted like a budget gaming PC and you play Dota, which I mean, if you're really into Dota, Dota is probably your whole life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's a very, very addictive game. And I mean, if you wanted a cheap solution to play it, this is totally viable. I mean, yeah, you can, you can actually be pretty competitive with this setup. I haven't dropped below 30 frames per second. I'm about to get owned by Jakiro. And, oh, I can level up. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to the next game before I embarrass myself anymore playing this game so badly. Okay, this is the last game that I want to show y'all, and it is Ready or Not. I want to show you this game specifically because it does not run particularly well. It just does not 
have very good frames per second. Like I'm getting max 35 frames per second whenever I start shooting my gun here. Like I'm dropping down to 28, 27. And I mean, at those frame rates, the experience just gets pretty choppy. Yeah, 23. It's just so choppy. So yeah, if you want to get the Steam Deck in hopes to play Ready or Not, uh, you're not going to have a very good time. <laughs> I mean, it is just not a game that is very optimized for the Steam Deck. And it could be because it's just not optimizing for DirectX 12 very well, because that's what this game uh, is running. Or it could be an entirely other factor, but... This is just my experience with playing this. Like, yeah, we're down to 17 frames per second. Like here, we got a guy, I don't know what he's doing. He's kind of freaking out, but uh, yeah, it's just not 19 frames per second. This is not a good title to play on the Steam Deck. This one would definitely need a more powerful PC. So I just wanted to show you guys this to show you that not every game runs perfectly. And that's it, y'all. That is the experience of hooking the Steam Deck up to a gaming PC peripheral setup with monitor, mouse, keyboard, the works, the headphones. What did y'all think? Did you think this was impressive? Do you think that $650 for the top of the line Steam Deck is worth it for this kind of experience. And I mean, you probably don't need the top of the line Steam Deck to get this experience. This would just be if you're going for the maximum amount of storage, you wanna have that many games on your desktop to play readily, that would be something that you would wanna do with the top of the line, 512 gigabyte. But I mean, you could probably get away doing this on the mid tier or even the low tier at like sub $300. Like that is pretty good. Let me know what y'all thought of this video in the comments below. Are you interested in doing something like this and have you tried this out and what is your experience like? Let me know in the comments below. Share this with everyone to get them excited about the Steam Deck and share the, what you can actually do with this device. This is incredible. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you wanna see more. I think there will be a lot more Steam Deck content, hopefully. I mean, I'm pretty impressed with this device. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your week. I'll see you in the next one.